Hey you guys, it's Lacey, and today I wanted to show you how to make oxygen without, well, water or algae. I have three different ways to show you. Each one has its own benefits and drawbacks. The first one is the simplest and the most energy efficient, but it does take a lot of manual messing about to get it to work and to keep it safe. So we can switch this to carbon to fill this loop. And this thermoregulator is going to cool the air that's in the loop. Now mine's filling pretty slow because my pump isn't in a high density area. Um, it's been pooling for a while. So depending on how much contaminated oxygen you have in the area with your pump, this will fill either much faster or slower. I'm going to close it so we can go ahead and see what's going on here. So it's gonna spin around, and I have this set to something random like carbon, this filter up here, so that it's not actually outputting anything. And we're gonna watch these, and they will eventually hit negative 190 degrees Celsius. And when they hit that, we're gonna open up the valve and let them out. This will make them turn into liquid oxygen as soon as they hit the air outside. But you have to keep a really close eye on this because if you hit negative 270 while you're not paying attention, your game will crash right now. Okay, we're ready to open it. Now if you leave this too long, like I think I just did, you'll get ice. So it's gonna come out. And I think that first one's gonna turn into ice. Oh no, there it goes, liquid oxygen. I think one of them will turn into ice. Now, if you freeze it, see, that one was frozen. It doesn't thaw out, unfortunately. Um, for some reason, it just stays that way forever. The next one requires a bit of setup. So, I have batteries. I have lots of batteries. And I also have these coal generators, which my duplicates are refusing to fill because they're poop heads. I have four coal generators right now, and that works fine, but you could also fill these batteries with duplicates running on manual generators. So you have to wait till your batteries are all the way full to do this. So we're just gonna wait here a little bit. Okay, our batteries are all the way full now. So what we're gonna do, well, almost all the way full, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna flip this switch. Whenever this switch turns on, all of this air is gonna cycle through 17 thermoregulators. Sometimes I need 18, but the temperature here is a little lower, so it was making ice with 18, but 17 works great here. So just, if you're making ice, remove one. Okay, and it's gonna come up here and it's gonna come out as liquid oxygen. See, there we go lots of liquid oxygen. But you wanna have this on the switch so you can turn it off whenever your batteries get too low. So I usually turn it off when mine hit 9,000, but I have 14 batteries. Okay, so we hit 9,000. We're gonna come have a duplicate turn this off. Okay, so now we have this one. This one is a bit of chaos. It has four thermoregulators. It pulls in a little air from the outside all the time. It has a pump going all the time that goes between these, but this keeps it from getting to that negative 270 that will crash your game. It has two pumps here, one's for liquid and one's for gas. All of the vents come out right above this pump, so if any oxygen, liquid oxygen does get made, it will get pumped up to the base. If you sit here and watch this, you can see it'll alternate based on which air it's grabbed. If you have a space where you're putting out lots of 180 degree air, it'll obviously like, reset and pull in more air so the temperature will go up. This tile right here is where the gas pump picks up. So I have these around that area and then I have the warm air coming from this side so it's more likely to pick up the cold air than it is the warm air. This one's nice because you don't have to babysit it but it is pretty intermittent. Um, it's basically on, off, on, off, on, off. So it's not a lot but it does happen every once in a while. And once it gets going, it does a pretty decent job. 
it does take a while for it to get going. Oh, he picked up some liquid contaminated oxygen. That's interesting. But that is the danger of such things. So another thing I've noticed is if you let it sit in a pool like this, which I've done on purpose, it doesn't become a gas very fast. It pretty much stays like this. So I thought it would be interesting if we deconstructed this here and watched it filter out. So when it filters out, it tends, see, to expand better, especially when it hits water. But if you're putting it into your water, then you have to be aware of some things that might happen. Like your pump might accidentally get it. I have my pump set up with two liquid filters. Water comes out here. So this one's set to just water so that everything else goes up to here. And this one's set to just liquid oxygen. So that way, if my pump does get a hold of it, then it'll be dropped right back down out here to make more oxygen. Also, carbon dioxide will tend to turn to a liquid around your liquid oxygen. See here, I even have my carbon dioxide falling out of the air, a solid carbon dioxide. I do have some solid oxygen. That's where I had the therm 18 thermoregulators and realized that was too cold. But see this way, you make a little oxygen every once in a while. I don't think that it's enough to maintain a base on its own if you're just using this one. But this one is a good holdover for in between this one because you can't do that one all the time. Another downside is you can get your plants too cold if you have it really close. See, look how cold this, how cold my base has gotten. So you might actually have to heat the air down here, which is interesting because usually I have trouble with my bases getting too hot. So while it does make a lot of oxygen intermittently, um, it still keeps your oxygen in your base pretty low. So you might wanna combine it with another method of making oxygen. But if you have a puffed, then you have a small amount of oxygen from your algae oxidizers. And if you keep this going and maybe do one of these every once in a while, then you probably will be able to have enough oxygen without having to have a ton of algae deoxidizers or running an electrolyzer, or maybe you could just run less electrolyzers. Um, but it is a great supplement to, <laughs> the plants hate it, but it's a great supplement to your other oxygen production. When you set up the 17 or 18 thermoregulators like this, you wanna make sure you're only putting contaminated oxygen into them because otherwise you would be pumping, well, liquid chlorine into your base. So I always put a gas filter on it and have everything else pumped back out. Well, I hope this helps you out while you're making your base. And if you enjoyed this video, then please hit that subscribe button so you don't miss me when I go live on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 1 p.m. Eastern or when I post a video. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And always remember, you're special and amazing, and thank you for being you. Bye!